Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to part three of this Pro Tools series, how to set up Pro Tools, how to get ready. We need to set our IO. The first video, we made a session, uh, learned where to save our sessions. Video two, we made some tracks to get ready to record in our session. But now in video three, we need to set the IO. As you can see, we have no inputs and no outputs. So basically, these tracks aren't being routed uh, anywhere in our session yet. So the first thing you want to do, you might need to configure a few things in Pro Tools, basically. So as you can see, my I.O. section, my I.O. Uh, window is going to look different than yours, most likely unless we're using the same interface. In this case, I'm using a Pro Tools Avid Carbon interface. You might be using something way smaller that only has one input, two inputs. Maybe you're using something like a Scarlet, maybe like the SSL interfaces, you know, something that's a little bit more popular, but essentially the window is always going to look the same. The only thing that's going to look different, as I said, is that your IO is going to be named slightly different or you're not going to have as many channels as I do. So the first thing is we have our tabs up here. So we have our input tab, output tab. We have buses, Dolby Atmos, which doesn't uh, apply to these videos. We have inserts, which doesn't apply to these videos. We have mic preamps, which also doesn't apply to these videos. And we have hardware insert delay, which is another thing that you don't need to worry about. The main things that we're focused on is these first three input, output and bus tab. Basically, the easy if you don't have any inputs showing, so anything labeled right here on this uh, name tab, that probably means that your I.O. you're not you haven't told Pro Tools to read your interfaces I.O. essentially. So what you can do is if it looks like this, so let's delete these. If it looks like this, it's completely empty. Most likely 99% of the time you can just hit default and it'll bring up your I.O. Same thing with output. If you're not seeing anything, you can just hit default and it will go ahead and aggregate all your inputs and outputs. And then same thing with buses. Let's just do it just to be safe. I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to hit default. And now you know that we are looking at a fresh IO setup. And that's pretty much all you need to worry about. You don't need to mess with anything. Pro Tools is pretty smart enough to uh, recognize what it needs to do, where it needs to route things, what it needs to name things. And you can just go ahead and hit OK down here. Now you can see. Back in the edit window, you can still see that it says no inputs and no outputs have been routed yet. So you can see right here. Basically, let's send input. So in this case, we're doing vocals. So assuming that you have uh, at least one input on your interface, we're going to hit channel one. For the rest, if you do have multiple um, inputs on your interface and you plan on recording more than just one signal or one microphone at a time, one input at a time, if you hold down shift, option, and command, and you click on interface in this case, as you can see right here, it says interface. It'll bring our input window open and you can see all the available inputs that we've set. It should look familiar to what we had in our IO window. While holding these modifier keys, if you click on the next corresponding input, so in this case, since we already set input one, because you can see that it's highlighted yellow, that means that it's in use already, we can jump down to two and then it'll pretty much follow and set the next corresponding inputs um, in order, which is kind of nice. And then as far as outputs go, we're going to select all the tracks. Um, you can do one by one. So if you hold command and click on the name tab, you can select one at a time. Or if you select the first track that you want to select within that group of tracks that you're trying to select, if you hold uh, shift down after you've already clicked your first track and come down to the last track that you want to do a batch. In this case, we want to set all these tracks to the master. If you hold shift, starting with the first track all the way down to the last track, and then you hold shift option, you can come back to here and then you can set all these tracks to monitor left and right. Since we are using a more typical master track that is built in Pro Tools, you don't really need to set an input and output. You just need to set output of where the master wants to go because the input and the output will reflect uh, on a master track. So now we know that we're all all these tracks are being sent to that and we can verify that if we come to here, my microphone that I'm talking into is coming into channel one on my interface. So if I hit this input monitor uh, button, we can see that it is coming through our master channel and then we can verify that we are getting signal. If you had the rest of your inputs filled on your interface and you want to check your guitar, bass, kick, snare in the example that I'm that I've made up, um, you can go ahead and hit input or you can put in record mode or arm the tracks uh, to make sure that you're getting signal, which you should be. And then we can't forget that we also made a reverb and delay track, aka we made some effects. We also need to make inputs for these and we need to send these, uh, their outputs somewhere so we can hear them. So the first thing, since these are 
auxiliary tracks. Obviously, we don't have a microphone plugged directly into them because they are for effects. We need to send them to buses. So to keep it simple for reverb, and it doesn't matter what order you do it on. Um, I think what's more important is getting in the habit of naming things so you can find them easily and I'll show you why in a second. So let's send our reverb to bus one and two. Let's send our delay to three and four. And then while holding shift and option, like I was talking about earlier, we can send both, both of these tracks to master or we can, yeah, so we can come up here and click that or we can start typing and we can hit monitor. So I hit M O N and you can see that it brought us up back to the top. Let's just go ahead and set our reverb. So let's use a stock D verb that comes with pro tools. So this is an avid plugin basically. And then delay comes with pro tools. It's built into pro tools. You can see that they look similar with their interface or UI essentially. So you know that they are avid plugins, not saying they all the avid plugins look like this, but as far as these two effects go, they look pretty similar. Why I said it was important to name these. We'll do that real quick is that if we come here, right click on the name template on the input uh, tab, we can hit rename and we're gonna rename this reverb. And then we right click again, we do delay. So now let's say we wanna send our vocals to the reverb and delay. Instead of looking for the bus number, in this case, reverb would have been bus one and two, we would have had to search bus one and two. And the reason I'm saying this is because if you start to have more effects throughout your session and you're not renaming your stuff, Hopefully, unless you're good at re or, uh, remembering what buses you uh, sent these to, then maybe it's fine. You don't need to rename them. But I think it's important to try to stay organized, especially if you're sending the session off to somebody else or you're collaborating with somebody. Uh, you want them to be able to jump into your session and understand where everything's being routed. And now you see that our vocal tracks are being sent to both reverb and delay. Um, and we can verify that if I set my input to on or I arm the track that my mic is going through right now you should hear that we are going through reverb and delay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's uh, another step done. We set our inputs today. We renamed the buses. We learned how to rename that. We learned how to use the IO window. But yeah, hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, please leave any comments in the uh, comment section below. If you like these videos, subscribe. Uh, use my affiliate links below if you're looking to buy any plugins or anything like that. Otherwise, you watching the video or giving a like goes a long way, and I appreciate it. I'll see you in video number four. Peace.